<laughs> Hello, dear listeners. Tis I, the groveling Sebastian Forlock, true blue Tory loyalist, and suitably subservient wretch cowering under the iron fisting of his betters. <laughs> I speak to you today to address yet another vile injustice. But if my tone seems insincere, I beg of you to forgive me. I prostrate myself before you today, the very image of a conflicted man. For the darkest of misdeeds perpetrated against my beloved party, however outrageous, come with certain Benefits for little old moi. Oh, God, Johnny, yes! Twist them! Turn the dials of your righteous fury! Oh, I'm a naughty little activist! I deserve it! Oh, oh my! <laughs> I really am having the best day! Which is shocking, really, given the damage that's been wrought upon the country this week. Dominic Raab, a great man and a wonderful and strong leader, ousted by the spoiled hands of the overindulged babies in the civil service. What are we coming to as a country? I ask, when a man can't even stay in his job when two allegations of aggressive and bullying behaviour against him are upheld, when he has specifically promised that he would resign if any allegation of aggressive and bullying behaviour against him was upheld. It's a farce. Are we now so meek, so hopelessly coddled, that we cannot bear to face strident criticism of our shoddy endeavours in the workplace? It's unthinkable that all it now takes is two dozen people making similar complaints about unacceptable conduct to topple a political titan and overachiever like Mr. Raab. It stinks of conspiracy. You know the old saying, dear listener. Where there are several dozen reports of smoke, there's probably a bunch of woke snowflakes pretending there's a fire. Oh, Christ, I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry. Oh, my work was subpar. I did breach the government's mandates over Gibraltar. Punish me. Gosh, the man's a pro. <laughs> what an unedifying few days it's been, watching the lefty press and the sneering critics in Labour and the Lib Dems crowing over this injustice. Our dear Prime Minister shows real strength and backbone by pausing for as long as humanly possible in the face of a clearly biased impartial report conducted by a lawyer he appointed, and these whooping primordials dare to label it dither and weakness. Then Mr. Raab does the just and noble thing by going on the attack against the conspiracy levelled at him, and they dare to call him a whining, arrogant narcissist who's clearly learned nothing. This isn't just twisting the truth, dear listeners, it's positively abusing it. Oh. Ah! Oh, speaking of which, here we go again. Oh, daddy! Purple my nipples. You're the boss, Daddy. You're the boss. Oh. Phew. Oh. What a dismal shit show this all is. The civil service ought to be ashamed of themselves. When Rishi Sunak promised he would lead a government of integrity and accountability. Did they decide to throw themselves behind that fair and noble vision? Far from it. They rushed forward in their droves with their spurious complaints, as if the promise of justice meant they should feel empowered to ask for it. 
Well, I hope they've learned their lesson. The Prime Minister's response to Rab's resignation makes it clear he is a true and loyal friend who will stand by anyone with the strength to remain loyal to him. And out of love, definitely not fear. Fear, for example, of the man he reappointed as Deputy PM, despite the mountain of complaints against him, might do something utterly cringeworthy if he actually sacked him, like, oh, I don't know, embarrass the entire government by throwing pathetic tantrums in the Telegraph and on the BBC when he's found to be an utterly unprofessional and unrepentant bully. <gasps> oh, Daddy. Did I say something naughty? Well, I suppose I must be punished then. <laughs> what a masterly foresight, leaving one in the bowl all morning in preparation. <laughs> It's in my eyes. <laughs> Good Lord. This has been one of the best weekends ever, which is hardly surprising, is it? I mean, can you blame moi? From the moment the news broke on Friday, it was obvious Mr. Raab was going to be stamping around furiously for days, just like the charming, level-headed, and professional force of nature the trolley report found him to be. So naturally, I gift-wrapped myself in my finest leather bodice and rushed straight to his house. Now that he is no longer allowed near any civil servants, I quite rightly assumed he'd need a rather more robust whipping boy, <laughs> and one is always all too willing to oblige. At this point, being a true Tory means you simply have to be an absolute glutton for punishment. <laughs> oh, Jesus! A Chinese burn to the whole shaft! <laughs> He's wringing me out like a dishcloth, and I never want to go home. I'm Sebastian Forlock, and the civil service's loss is definitely my gain. Reporting for... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh.